So, all right. Hello out there, and welcome to the Cotton Companion Podcast once again. Uh, this is Beck Barnes and Jim Stebman of Cotton Grower, and we are coming to you from the internationally acclaimed Cotton Companion Studios right here in Memphis, Tennessee, where in about a day we are going to go into safer at home mode was the uh, name that they gave this basically shelter in place somewhat like a shelter in place order from uh, Memphis Mayor Jim Strickland's office. So that is just the latest in the myriad of ways that this pesky COVID-19 virus is impacting daily life across the U.S. We know it's not just us, it's every community is uh, impacted by this thing in one way or another. But nevertheless, we are going to forge ahead as best we can here, uh, a couple of refugees here in Memphis uh, to help me do that. As always, is my partner in crime, Mr. Jim Stebman. Howdy, Jim. Hello, Beck. And I just want everybody to know, uh, home office is ready and waiting. Yeah. How, about, how about yours? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have both been clear. I don't know about Jim, but I, yeah, I had I had a third bedroom in my home that my wife and I moved into after we got married that basically served as the room where all of my junk was stashed away. Banned. Yeah, and the door was always closed. You yeah. know, wife didn't love various movie posters and sports posters. Apparently that's not um, part of the normal uh, home decor. All of, all of your bachelor stuff. Exactly. It's basically been, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. been cataloged and stored in there. Well, not cataloged, probably. Well, no, no, stored and probably <laughs> every time I turn around, a little piece of it gets thrown out. So that that <laughs> process of throwing it all well, out. Whether you notice or not. <laughs> right, exactly, has been sped along by this uh, virus and so now the office is nice and clean and actually, an, it looks like an office. And that's a good thing because both my wife and I are both working from home here for the next, at least foreseeable future. So uh, I'll give you all one guess who gets the use of the office. <laughs> <laughs> now that it's cleaned out, uh, I will likely be on the uh, in the chair in the living room or something. So anyhow, enough of that. Uh, we are here. Well, one last time in our own office uh, on this Monday, March the 23rd. Um, to give you all a little peek behind the curtain, I say only one last time because we are presently moving out of this office. It's a move that began uh, very much unrelated to the current virus situation. We were going to move out for, for months now. The plan has been for us to be out of this office by April 1. And now thanks to this pesky virus, uh, here in the very last week of that process, we are scrambling to get out of here uh, before the town goes into lockdown mode tomorrow. So before they start posting officers outside the, you yeah, know, going door to door in the office building. Right. Yeah. So um, all of that is to say uh, that this may well, in fact, will be the last episode recorded here in the original internationally acclaimed Cotton Companion Studio also known as our fourth unused office here in the larger office area uh, that we've used for the past four years. But do not worry. Um, we are going to be uh, going ahead uh, with uh, new ways to bring the podcast to you. You actually don't have to be in the same room to produce a podcast. And so mm -hmm. we're going to get a little more techy in our production of these things going forward. Uh, but, but for now... Uh, we're going to forge ahead with this, the last one in our, the, what we we jokingly refer to as the Cotton Companion Studio here. So this promises to be a special one, uh, but the, thir the first thing that we need to do is to bring you a short message from our sponsors, the fine folks at Phytogen. Phytogen is pleased to sponsor the Cotton Companion, bringing you the latest news to help you thrive all season long. All right, we appreciate uh, Phytogen and our sponsors. Uh, again, the aforementioned Phytogen brand Cottonseed, as well as the U.S. Cotton Trust Protocol. That's a program from Cotton Incorporated. Uh, for now, as we always do, we are going to follow that Phytogen ad you just heard up with our custom content segment that's featuring our very own custom content editor, Robin Sickberg. And she recently spoke down, uh, sat down and spoke with, rather, uh, our old buddy Chris Main, Phytogen's Cotton Development Specialist for West Tennessee and North Alabama. And we're going to bring you that custom interview segment right now. Hi, I'm Robin Sipper, Custom Content Editor for Meister Media Worldwide, publisher of Cotton Grower Magazine. I'm here today with Dr. Chris Main, Phytogen Cotton Development Specialist covering West Tennessee and North Alabama. As we get started today, Chris, 
Growers are starting to get ready for the new season and they're really trying to figure out how to maximize their profitability. Uh, so why is it important to consider that big picture of profitability instead of just looking at the final yield? Robin, yield is the major piece for the profitability puzzle, but many factors can lead to higher overall profits. And grower needs to consider how an input or a management practice will actually impact the bottom line at the end of the season. Something in, in May or June that they do may increase yield, but if it doesn't provide a solid return on the investment, growers should probably consider whether it's actually the right fit for their farm or not. You know, some items that we can impact early on include uh, planting a variety with good fiber quality uh, to get higher value, um, you know, watching our input costs, uh, as well as equipment, fuel, and labor costs that all can impact the bottom line at the end of the growing season. There definitely are a lot of factors growers need to consider. And so how does phytogen particularly help growers improve profitability? Phytogen has been known for um, our consistent yield and, and great fiber quality. Um, so when you're, you're planning to plant cotton, picking a variety that has those two characteristics is important you know, to get a good start on profitability. Additionally, the Enlist weed control system offers excellent weed control and tank mix flexibility for fewer trips through the field throughout the year. That saves time and labor costs for the growers. Uh, Wide Strike 3 Insect Protection uh, is a 3G VT product that provides unmatched control of bollworms compared to the 2G uh, varieties that are planted in many areas. And in recent season, these 2G VT products have often required multiple insecticide applications, uh, translating into higher insecticide costs and more trips across the field for the applicator. Next, phytogen breeding traits will give uh, implant protection against major yield robbing pests such as root knot nematodes, bacterial blight, bird silly, and wilt. This protection is built in in, in the seed. Um, it comes in our varieties and will help lower overall production costs throughout the year. And finally, early season vigor should be of great importance to our growers. Fighting and cotton seed is well known in the industry for having great early season vigor. This helps with uh, establishing a stand with fewer replants. That provides not only peace of mind for the grower, but it can save trips across the field um, at a time whenever we need to be getting across the field in a timely manner. Finally, excellent early season vigor allows a, a farmer to plant at a lower seeding rate, which will definitely save money on the front end of his crop. With all these moving parts and factors to evaluate, who should growers contact if they have more questions about increasing profitability? They need to contact their local phytogen territory manager or cotton development specialist, or they can visit phytogen.com to find out more information. All right. Thanks, Chris. We appreciate your time on the program. Thank you, Robin. So, all right. A big thank you to Robin and Chris and to Phytogen there. And uh, with that, we're going to get the ball rolling well and truly on this, the 68th episode, I believe this is. Absolutely. Of the Cotton Companion. And man, we got a lot to get, a lot to get into today. Um, Jim is going to lead us, as always, in his news segment where topics are going to include but are not limited to. Um, uh, our buddy Larry Steckel has some cotton pre-emerge tips to uh, share with us. And then what else could we talk about but... COVID-19 and this virus's impact on our farm community uh, here at a really crucial moment in the calendar year for farming. <laughs> I mean, you guys are getting ready to plant or are or already, already planting. planting yes. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, th this thing is having an impact today. And um, so we're going to talk about all the myriad ways that that is touching our industry. Uh, but before we dive into the news, uh, on a very much related note, I wanted to address a question that I've seen pop up on social media from farmers, and that is this question of access to inputs in light of all of the social disruption and business disruptions that this virus has caused. Uh, many of y'all have been openly wondering um, if, you know, after you've spent a, sub a substantial amount of your time and energy and, gosh, money, on getting a crop in the ground, you know, are you going to be able to have access to these vital inputs needed to bring that crop to harvest? And that is, <laughs> it's a smart question, <laughs> man. Uh, and I've seen several of y'all ask that question on social media. Um, and I think right now it's, uh, my feeling is that yes, y'all will. Okay. Before I, before I um, get ahead of myself and I'm certainly not trying to uh, cause any anxiety or panic. I, I feel that you guys will have access to those supplies, but I think that right now uh, it's very important 
for y'all to be hearing that from the suppliers themselves. They need to be communicating with farmers and hopefully they are, I trust that they are, but it's important for them to have this calming hand and to be transparent about their capabilities and the potential for successes or challenges in their supply chain in their efforts to bring you that fertilizer or I don't know, that crop input, crop protection, crop plant health um, input. So uh, if they are not communicating with y'all right now, then man, they, they gotta get it together and quick because as we say, things are happening right now. You, got, you guys are trying to get ready to plant right now. So, uh, you know, I saw a tweet yesterday from a gentleman named Jeff Tarsi with Nutrient Ag Solutions. And he just did a pre-recorded video. Uh, it was about a minute long. And I'm not going to read the whole thing verbatim to you, but uh, a sample of it, uh, he said, uh, we, we need you, our valuable growers, more than ever. You've been practicing what is known today as social distancing for all of your farm careers. Uh, we want you to know that we at Nutrient Ag Solutions, we are here with you. Our local Nutrient Ag Solution branches are open and our crop consultants are ready to help you with everything you need to help you kick this season off. Nutrient Ag Solutions is with you today and will be with you tomorrow as well. And so, you know, to be sure, <laughs> all of those uh, uh, brands, supplier brands, are client of cotton, clients of Cotton Grower Magazines, and, and we want to be good business partners with all of them. I don't normally read out their <laughs> messaging to their audiences just willy-nilly, but I do that right now because I want to give kudos to this guy, Jeff Tarsi, and kudos to Nutrien for getting ahead of this thing at a time when there's a lot of confusion out there and there are so many farmers asking questions. You know, Jeff did the right thing and just put that message out there. I know there's, you know, regulations in every state right now. There's, it seems like there's a, a new regulation every day about what you can go out and do in the community. And, you know, there's these recommendations about only being around 10 people at a time. And so, Naturally, y'all are wondering, can you even walk in the store? Can you walk in the farm goods store? Um, and so it's good for folks like Jeff to get out in front of those questions. So uh, we at Cotton Grower, we want to be there with y'all as well. Uh, if you were having questions or concerns about the challenges posed by this virus on your operation in any way, then by all means, please tell us about it. Uh, reach out to us on social media. You can email me at bbarnes at meistermedia.com. That's B-B-A-R-N-E-S at meister, M-E-I-S-T-E-R, media.com. Uh, you know, I do come from the farm. I got a lot of farmer friends, but man, y'all live this stuff. And in a lot of ways, I don't know what I don't know a lot of times, but I want to help y'all. So if you have a concern or uh, a question about supply chain, gas prices, anything under the sun related to this virus that is giving you anxiety right now, please email us. And uh, we want to reach out to the experts, have answers for y'all. And uh, chances are, if you are worried about something, there's a bunch of your farming neighbors and peers who are also worried about that thing. So speak up and uh, help them and help us to help y'all out. Okay, Jim, that's enough of my spiel. Uh, let's get to the news of the day right after we hear from our sponsor, the fine folks at Cotton Incorporated, to tell us about the U.S. Cotton Trust Protocol. As a U.S. cotton producer, you already produce one of the most responsibly grown fibers on the planet. Enroll in the U.S. Cotton Trust Protocol and show the world how you grow. The U.S. Cotton Trust Protocol helps market your cotton to the growing list of brands, retailers, and consumers demanding sustainably produced fibers in today's marketplace. Enroll now at TrustUSCotton.org. That's TrustUSCotton.org. The U.S. Cotton Trust Protocol. Are you in? Okay, again, a huge shout out to our new sponsor, our friends at Cotton Incorporated, who do so much heavy lifting on behalf of our industry and uh, this U.S. Trust U.S. Cotton Trust Protocol is just another example of the extra effort that they give to build demand for our crop, and uh, we're proud to have them as a sponsor. <clears throat> so, Jim, without further ado, please hit us with your news items of the day, sir. I will indeed, and, and we're going to ramble a little bit during during this episode's oh news, uh, simply because I think we we need to we need to sort of sit back and, and look at, at where things stand and, and how this COVID nineteen virus is has has impacted U.S. cotton so far. Obviously, over the last two weeks, the news and, and, and everything has been nominated by COVID-19 
and its impact on U.S. society and business. And agriculture in many ways, is, as Beck mentioned, operates on social distancing, especially when it's time for you to go to the field like now. But there's still aspects to the virus that are impacting farming operations this season. I just want to go through a couple of these things that, that really have, have come in and, and taken, that we've taken note of over the past week. Uh, obviously, the impact on markets is evident pretty much on a daily basis. And we've, we have covered this, this seemingly and continual rapid slide of cotton prices uh, in Cotton Grower Magazine. We covered it on our website and obviously in past episodes of this podcast. And there's no use really dwelling on it again at this point because things are continuing to change. Uh, Dr. O.A. Cleveland, who, uh, who visited with us in our last podcast, his latest column, which is posted on, on cottongrower.com, uh, pretty much spells the situation out in detail, and, and I suggest you read it for yourselves. Uh, it's not getting better. It is, uh, it's pretty much out of our control at this point, and it's likely to be a while before we see any positive change. And, and obviously, that's news that, that we hate to see and certainly hate to talk about as well. Yeah. Um, likewise, there are a lot of questions and confusion about the labor market, uh, in particular the status of visas for H-2A temporary workers. Uh, in the past week, we have seen temporary shutdown to U.S. embassies and consulates in Mexico. We have seen a halt by the U.S. State Department of all routine visas in most countries around the world, and then a clarification from the State Department within 24 hours of uh, that basically saying they will keep processing visas for seasonal workers. Uh, for workers planning to come in from other countries like South Africa, and I know a number of you growers have been relying on, on that as a, as a source of, of farm labor, uh, quite honestly, if they're not already here, they're probably not coming anytime soon, strictly because of the visa issue and all of the, uh, the airline restrictions that are currently in place. Uh, I think one thing we can, we can say thankfully is that cotton's traditional meeting season is pretty much wrapped up. Uh, starting with the Beltwide Conference, uh, we've had state extension and cotton organization meetings. Most of our regional farm shows are behind us, uh, and a lot of other company-driven gatherings are already complete. But in the past week, uh, we have seen the cancellation of most of the remaining meetings on the calendar, and most of those are primarily in Texas. Uh, Texas Cotton Association canceled their annual meeting coming up in April, uh, their flow meeting in September, so they're looking ahead at the calendar at this point. Uh, the Southwest Jenner School in Lubbock was canceled, as was Texas Cotton Jenner's Association annual meeting and trade show, the, the ever-popular pop Texas Gin Show in Lubbock and the Plains Cotton Growers Annual Meeting. None of those are going to be rescheduled at this point for this year. Uh, the other thing too, there's certainly the oxen and other herbicide training sessions that have been going on uh, for the most, uh, most of the part for this, uh, for this first quarter of the year. Uh, those are still available online. Uh, and I think uh, a, a kudos to the State Extension Services for, for setting up these training modules that you can certainly go to and, uh, and take a look at and get your training at your own pace uh, and certainly have your registrations and certifications in place for that. And as we, we kind of anticipated, one of the things that we're involved in every year from a, from, a, a, from a not really a peripheral perspective because we are directly involved in it is the uh, American Cotton Shippers Association International Cotton Institute, which is a six-week residential program it usually starts mid-June, goes through mid-July here in Memphis at the University of Memphis. Uh, that program has been canceled for 2020. Uh, it basically provides an overall education on all aspects of the cotton industry and international business, and its students come from all over the world. So obviously with, again, visa issues and travel restrictions and the, uh, all the other restrictions that are currently in place, uh, that's just not going to happen this year. And AXA anticipates resuming that educational program next year. Pardon me while I take a drink. <coughs> well, you said you're going to ramble. <clears throat> I was rambling. Yeah. I was definitely rambling <laughs> on that one. Uh, Beck mentioned uh, some, some information that, that our good friend Larry Steckel has, has released here within the past week. And, and I think in our last podcast, we talked about some of his recommendations about some adjusted burndown options for this season. And since then, he's released some thoughts on on some possible changes for pre-emergence weed management for cotton, especially if you're dealing with problems with barnyard grass, jungle grass, and goose grass 
in addition to your, uh, to your Palmer Amaranth. Uh, and here basically are some of his recommendations. You see Prowl H2O is a good option for improved grass control, but suggests adding a low rate of cotteran to help with pigweed control. Uh, a tank mix of brake and cotteran can also provide good grass control, but he does point out though that brake needs at least a half inch of rainfall to activate, and it may work more consistently when applied with burn down early pre-plant where it's more likely to catch a rain. But for soils with higher clay content, uh, that 16 ounce rate of break is probably going to be too low. You're going to have to probably bump that rate up to 24 ounces per acre. No shortage of rain here in West Tennessee. Oh no, no shortage. Of, no, no. In fact, we would we would love to get rid of some right yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If it, if you have high clay content soils, I can just imagine how slick your uh, those fields are right now. Yeah. I know how bad my backyard is. Uh, Larry goes on to say, dual magnum and outlook provide probably the most consistent grass control in most situations, but except in a cover crop where research is showing that warrant provides better residual control. But he also warns that these three herbicides also have the highest probability of harming a stand when used as a pre, and a better option for them may be using a split shot approach where half to two thirds of the full rate goes out pre and the rest goes in an early post application sometime around the typical THRIPS application window. Uh, you can find this information and more details in, uh, in Larry's article, which is also now available uh, on cottongrower.com. The rambling continues, uh, simply because a lot of things have happened today. Yeah, that, it's, a, it's something that literally every hour. It really like is. I'm, I'm, news. I'm feeling like the old guys who go tear stuff off of the news ticker, yeah, you yeah. know, and come, come running in, back, come yeah, running in, and like, newsflash, yeah. newsflash. <laughs> uh, but anyway, apparently uh, there, are, uh, there are movements in Congress obviously on a massive economic stimulus package. Uh, and they, uh, as, as part of this, they may clear the way for another round of market facilitation program payments, as well as some other aid to, uh, to ag producers. Uh, this bill could include a provision to replenish the Commodity Credit Corporation's spending authority and increase that limit from $30 billion to $50 billion. Now, as you recall, or as you know, USDA used that CCC account to, for the MFP payments over the last two years to help offset the impact of the trade war with China. Now, as we've stated over and over, uh, Ag Secretary Sonny Perdue is still saying, don't expect additional MFP payments, but many farm groups have said they expect money to be needed both because of sluggish exports and because of the impact of COVID-19 and sources uh, in Washington are saying that USDA is supporting or was supporting this increased spending authority for the, uh, for the CCC. So uh, we'll see how that works out here at this point. In fact, even as we speak, I think the debate continues in yeah. Congress. Yeah, again, it's, it's Monday, March 23rd. So right. I, I, to be honest with you, <clears throat> I have a hard time envisioning a stimulus package being passed that does not include provisions for farmers right now. I, I actually saw a tweet uh, I think it was yesterday, somebody was saying that these are the, as cotton prices slid into the 40s, I believe, um, or maybe I don't, you guys are, are more familiar with it than I am. I haven't looked at it, but I feel like it said that prices have slid into the 40s and they're currently at their lowest point since 2009. So, you know, it's over a decade, uh, lowest mm. lowest price point in over a decade. So, I mean, my goodness, what is a what is an MFP for if not for, if not for that? And I know that the market... Austin's right. could go, you know, theoretically could be limited up for the next month or whatever. But Right. And, you know, it, it's, it, I mean, we can sit here and debate this all day, right. you know, up, up one side and down the other. But, you know, I think it would, long, you know, we'll just, we'll see how this works out because this is obviously going to be tied in also to the whole economic stimulus package that, uh, that prospectively may provide some payments to each household yeah. in the U.S. So uh, that's a good point. Time will tell. And, it, and probably by the time you hear this, there will be an answer, you know, <laughs> right. to it, or at least twelve different, uh, you know, answers <laughs> and new questions. Right. Over the next two days. Right. As it, as is our habit, we will give you the news, and it will change immediately as yeah. soon as as soon as we turn the microphones off. Yeah. Uh, my last item uh, comes out of Gastonia, North Carolina. Uh, if you're wondering what the cotton industry or what the industry is doing to help with the COVID nineteen uh, pandemic. 
the folks at Parkdale Mills in Gastonia is organizing a national effort to ramp up production of face masks for healthcare workers. Uh, what they have done is they're working with company, other companies like Haynes, Fruit of the Loom, and six other companies to put a manufacturing supply chain in place for these masks, and that's according to the National Council of Textile Organizations. This, this decision, according to the, or, to, uh, to the NCTO, heeds a call of nation to help. Now, while these companies are often competitors and usually are competitors in the marketplace, they are banding together for the greater good of a nation, facing one of its most monumental challenges, according to a statement. Anderson Warlick, who is president and CEO of Parkdale, has worked closely with the White House officials to expedite this process, uh, help cut through the bureaucratic, bureaucratic red tape, and allows production to begin soon after these masks were approved and certified by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Production, as we're sitting here on March 23rd, production was expected to begin today with delivery starting uh, the middle of the week, so within a couple of days. And once at full capacity, which will take about four to five weeks to get up to, up to speed, this coalition pr expects to produce up to 10 million face masks per week. So uh, help is coming for our friends in the, uh, for those wonderful people uh, in the medical profession who desperately need this, uh, this type of protection as, uh, as we move ahead with, with this pandemic situation over the next, next weeks and months. Yeah, well, another demonstration of how crucial our crop is to so many, has a, it has a, a touch point in so many markets, not just clothing, not just housing, but in the medical profession, protective pr professions right. uh, as well. So Understand there was also a shortage of cotton swabs. And, uh, and that, that situation is also being, uh, being alleviated at, at this point. Yeah, yeah. Okay, was that it, Jim? That's it. Are we that's done with it. If, I, if I go back and look on my computer, I'll probably find something else that's happened in the last yeah. five minutes. But You're right. You know, I, think, I think we'll stop there for, for right now. Very good. Yeah, we do want to hold you there. Uh, we don't have an interview today. It's been a crazy week, and we've had a little bit of trouble uh, wrangling folks in, but we certainly understand that people are out of pocket. I know y'all understand that too. So, so okay, that's going to just about do it for this installment of the Cotton Companion podcast. Uh, we want to thank Phytogen. We want to thank Cotton Incorporated. Uh, both for sponsoring us, and we want to thank you, dear listener, sincerely for joining us. If you would, if you like what you're hearing, by all means, please tell your farmer buddies about this podcast. They can get to our podcast in three easy ways. The first is at cottongrower.com forward slash companion. The second way is to subscribe to our channel on iTunes or wherever it is that you are finding your podcast these days. Simply search for The Cotton Companion. The third way, the best way, is to sign up for our weekly e-newsletter, the Cotton Grower e-news. You can do that by going to www.cottongrower.com forward slash subscribe. Also, please make sure you're following us on social media. We're at Cotton Grower Mag on Twitter. And on Facebook, you can find us by simply searching for Cotton Grower Magazine. Uh, we hope that you are enjoying our latest issue, the March issue. That April one should be hitting your mailboxes here in a couple of weeks now, maybe. We are on press. There so. you go. There you go. Uh, this podcast is produced by Mr. Tyler Hatch, who works at the Mothership Meister Media Worldwide in beautiful Willoughby, Ohio. My name is Beck Barnes, and I'm going to be back with you in two weeks on the next episode of The Cotton Companion. For now, though, on behalf of my own Cotton Companion, Mr. Jim Stebman, we wish you and your operation all the best. And stay safe out there. There you go. Phytogen thanks you for listening to this edition of The Cotton Companion. To learn how you can thrive with Phytogen, go to phytogen.com. <laughs>